Let me start by saying that uh, AI presents new challenges for the regulators. And regu by regulators, I mean mainly the state, the government. It presents the same future as any other emerging disruptive technology, namely novelty, fast growth, prominent impact, and of course, uncertainty and ambiguity. Many of uses applications are characterized by opacity, limited or not at all existing explainability, biased and possibly discriminatory outcomes. AI claims that it can transform a wide range of different sectors and governments, of course, are facing the need or should face the need to control the impacts of AI, how to manage it, it's not easy. Should the state act as a facilitator, a moderator, an arbitrator, or while framing the role of the state, we should take into account that the state has the positive obligation to consider the common good and guarantee the fundamental rights. Uh, the debate on ethics, uh, the question is, uh, how can you, we guarantee that AI is designed and used uh, in a responsible way? How can we regulate AI without hindering innovation? And if we can refrain, abstain from, from uh, regulation. The debate of, on ethics for AI has already identified these challenges and the, the fundamental rights and the rule of law. And over the recent years, governments, companies, international and other organizations like OECD and the Council of Europe around the world have actively adopted ethics guidelines focusing on principles such as transparency, privacy, justice, and fairness. But these codes and guidelines cannot replace the law, in my opinion, because they are too vague, too generic, and mainly they lack the democratic legitimacy and the binding nature which will allow, enable the enforcement. I, I'm invited and I am supposed and I am expected to provide a comparative analysis of EU and UK policy. This is not very easy. And I think that I cannot promise a lot because it's not easy to compare these, these policies. On the one side, we have a mature text, more or less, not perfect, but mature. Uh, that means the AI Act, the proposal of Artificial Intelligence Act, which was submit, submitted and debated one year now, since April, 2021. And on the other side, we have an AI policy strategy uh, several papers and, uh, com and positions, and the announcement of regulatory objectives, and the announcement of the delivery of a white paper to deal with the regulation. In early 20, 2022, not yet uh, submitted as far as I can uh, uh, control. I mean, I have not found everything in this, in this direction. And I, I must say it was a, an expectation and a fear of me that they will, they will submit yesterday or two days before, and I, could, I, should not, I could not have enough time to, to review it, but they didn't. Uh, why should or why they should or why we should regulate now? And which would be the regulatory goals? Uh, the explanatory memorandum, uh, which accompanies the AI Act, frames the aim of the, for the new law by saying that AI, it's not an end in itself. And we, we should, I think we should keep it in mind. It should be a tool for people and be a force for good in society with the ultimate aim of increasing human well-being. The rules for AI available in the union, uh, in the union market or otherwise affecting people in the union should therefore be human centric. This is the, the main position taken by the EU so that people can trust, and I emphasize trust, I'm speaking about this more later on, 
that the technology is used in a way that is safe and compliant with the law, including respect for fundamental rights. Of course, there are concerns about overregulating, and this has been also a self-restraint in a way for the European Union because overregulating might sometimes be as bad or worse than, than not regulating at all. According to the UK uh, governmental policy paper about digital regulation, uh, the government is committed to proportionate regulation and where appropriate the regulation. Our response to the risks of digital technologies will be proportionate and will not overshadow the huge benefits that digital technologies bring. So according to the paper. Um, it's interesting that it's also ref mentioned that regulation should be designed to minimize unnecessary burdens on businesses, be outcomes focused. This may be also quite similar to the impact fo focus uh, of the EU, backed by clear evidence of harm. We have discussed yesterday uh, the discussion about harm based approach and consider the effects of innovation. Let me uh, present a quote of the report of the British Parliament five years ago, which demonstrates this balancing act between harnessing benefits and safeguarding against the risks. According to the Parliament, the, the British, the, the UK Parliament, government must set the boundaries for what AI can and cannot do forward-looking policies, prioritizing the good of the wider public should be adapted. Taking into account the remarkable speed technology is progressing, government must act quick in guiding the norms and standards for AI and set the appropriate regulation where needs be. Furthermore, furthermore government must evolve the te te with technology to harness the opportunities and protect society from the risks. A common element of both approaches, a central element, is this of trust or confidence. According to the memorandum, the AI, AI Act aims to implement the objective for developing and fostering an ecosystem of trust in AI by proposing a legal framework for trustworthy AI. This is also a, a, a very important motto of the, of the European approach. Of course, trust is interrelated with legal certainty and safety. Improving legal certainty is another objective explicitly present in the EU uh, legislative initiative. The EU seeks to ensure legal certainty to facilitate investment and innovation in AI. It aims also at ensuring that AI systems placed on the EU market are safe, this is another uh, aspect, and respect EU law and an enhancing governance and effective enforcement of the EU law on fundamental rights and safety requirements. Similar are the goals used in the, in, in the wording and uh, in the objectives of AI strategy documents. Uh, as the UK AI Council's roadmap published uh, in January 2021 states the UK will only feel the full benefits of AI if all parts of society have full confidence in the science and the technologies and in the governance and regulation that enable them and according to the map to an effective AI assurance ecosystem to unlock the benefits, trust in AI systems, and how they are used. So, what? Cannot hear me? Is it okay now? Yes, but now I cannot, I cannot change my, <laughs> that's a problem. Okay.
the European Commission uh, has released this um, uh, highly anticipated artificial intelligence, as uh, already said a year ago, and it re represents the most ambitious attempt to regulate AI technologies to date. According to a famous persona, Paul Nemitz, uh, he said it's the first time that uh, an organization, a state, let's say, a, a state is trying to say, to, to, to regulate how a technology will be used. It's, it's not, it's, it's, it's a little bit exaggerated, but anyway. To the extent that it is systematically and methodologically acceptable to compare draft regulation and an AI strategy, it's interesting to underline the quite different approach with regard to the definition of AI. The European Commission found that the notion of AI should be clearly defined to ensure legal certainty, given that the determination of what we understand under this concept is crucial for the allocation of legal responsibilities and under the new framework. Based in a way to the definition already used by the OECD, I must say, the AI Act, the proposal, proposes a broad but technical and technical definition of AI. Software that is developed with one or more uh, of approaches and techniques, that means including machine learning, logic and knowledge based approaches and statistical approaches, and can, for a given set of human defined objectives, generate outputs such as, as context, predictions, recommendations, or decisions influencing the environment they interact with. The UK AI strategy seems to avoid the challenge to define AI, noting that the clarity needed for legislation is not required, not yet required at this stage. As such, it alludes to a broad definition of AI, referring to mimicking facets of human intelligence and ability to learn and to, uh, to think. Machines that perform tasks normally requiring human intelligence, especially when the machines learn from data how to do those tasks. And I'm uh, wondering who is going to conduct this Turing test. And what about values? Uh, the European policy makers, the, the regulators, undertook to develop, as already emphasized, a human-centric approach to AI to ensure that Europeans can benefit from the, the good and uh, they, or the, at the same time, they will have their uh, fundamental rights um, guaranteed. Of course, this human-centric approach is quite vague, and it has been also uh, criticized. Uh, has been also criticized as a kind of anachronismus in nowadays. Uh, the AI Act explicitly adopts the ethical guidelines proposed by the high-level expert group. And the, the Act inherits the, the, the foundational, foundational approach already found in the GDPR. That means human dignity and fundamental rights. Uh, the, the AI Act addresses the most basic concerns uh, to artificial intelligence, means bias, opacity, and uh, the problem of explainability and the vulnerability to misuse in the case of gaming, etc. Of course, the proposed regulation does not uh, address the main concerns with regard to artificial intelligence in a full way, that means bias and opacity, it brings to be a, a soft procedural, mainly procedural approach uh, on, uh, on intelligence by addressing bias indirectly through data governance, transparency, and by remedying opacity through interpretability. It's a, it's a huge discussion. On the other side, in its latest AI strategy, the UK government makes brief references to several values, including fairness, openness, liberty, security, democracy, 
the rule of law and respect for human rights. While the values and norms uh, articulated by this strategy would not themselves be able to pronounce on competing interests and views, the, uh, a tool for interpreting, but they are, uh, themselves cannot be used as rules. They do create a framework for weighting and justifying specific rules. The AI regulation uh, is a horizontal uh, document. It has been designed to be complementary to cross-sectoral EU legislation, namely GDPR and sectoral safety legislation, which is currently also harmonized in the updated regulation of, uh, for machinery products, which classifies AI systems that are used as a safety component as high risk. On the UK side, side it seems that the UK uh, ad will adopt a sectoral approach. Uh, the national AI, AI strategy outlines four key reasons why a sector-led approach will be uh, more adequate and more uh, appropriate for, for UK. The first is that the boundaries of the potential harms of AI are gray, not black and white, like it seems to be the, the, the European, the, the EU approach. Use cases for AI have the potential to be highly complex, to be regulated by a general uh, law. Empowering regulators and industries to respond and work with innovators in their sectors to advise on interpretation of existing regulation will enable a much faster response to individual harms. Not very sure about it. Me, not the, the strategy. It may be difficult to differentiate between the specific impact on, uh, of AI against other external factors. The uh, European Union has adopted, it's right, very well known, the so-called risk-based approach. Also, not only in the GDPR, but also in the AI Act. This framework, uh, will uh, uh, at, the, at the beginning, the, the white paper has proposed a, a binary low risk and high risk, but the, 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 the AI Act is distinguishing four different uh, risk levels regarding practices and systems and AI systems. Um, this is unacceptable risks, high risks, limited risks and minimal risks. The levels of risks, risks are not based on the underlying technological method used, but on the potential impact on fundamental rights. A major difference to the UK approach is while the EU draft legislation would ban AI uses that constitute unacceptable risks with the exception of use of biometric systems in public places for, for the, the uses that you have already mentioned, also, that such uses would be uh, manipulation techniques, social credit scoring system like this uh, used in China. On the other side, the UK plan does not mention any specific practices that it could or would be prohibited. They express concerns about the fairness, bias, accountability, et cetera. Here you have an overview. It's coming from the European Commission. It's not uh, very important. Uh, let me say something about the, the concerns and criticism uh, that has been uh, uh, exercised to, to this risk-based approach, approach. The European Data Protection Board and the European Data Protection Supervisor have welcomed the provisions in the proposal, but they think that some of the provisions leave out the risks for groups of individuals or the society as a whole. That means especially the group discrimination, and I'm referring also to this discussion about group privacy, which is also, I think, very interesting. 
uh, an artificial intelligence that now appears to qualify as low risk. This is another uh, criticism expressed some days ago by Lillian Edwards in a, in a, in a, a, a paper, opinion paper, opinion, I'm not sure about the nature of the paper, some days ago or a week ago. And an artificial intelligence act, uh, system that now appears to qualify as low risk under, under the regulation could later have to be requalified as high risk after a quite minor change in intention. And as already the EDPS and the EDPB has expressed, it will be not always be possible for a provider to assess all users for the NIA system. The initial risk assessment will be of more general value than one performed by the user of an AI systems. And at this time, I will say that the, that, that the PR requirements expressed by the, imposed by the GDPR are still applicable in parallel. Do I, how much time do I have? Not to be, to be sure that I have to, okay, I'll skip, I'll skip this, yes, okay. Just to, to, to say that there are also some other shortcomings of the AI proposal. Um, it's, as already emphasized, is meant as provider self-assessment. Of course, there, there are there are control, there are oversight mechanisms, there, there will be uh, control authorities that will be established, etc. Another major issue is this, is this lack of clear judicial means to control the standards adopted uh, with regard to AI, adopted without democratic legitimacy and without oversight of the standardization process. There is a lack of individual enforcement rights and there is a lack of proper coordination mechanism between the AI authorities to be established in the member states. Another issue is which will be the competent AI authority and which will be its relationship to the data protection authorities also. This is a, a main issue that was uh, now revealed by the EDPB and the DPS. And let me finish with the leadership. We have discussed yesterday the issue of leadership. Uh, the AI Act, like the GDPR, is explicitly positioned to become a global model. The European Council itself two years ago uses the term digital sovereignty and according to moral timers, digital sovereignty is the ability to decide and act autonomously on the essential digital aspects of a longer term future in the economy, society and democracy. It's not my... Uh, I would say, post democracy, society, and economy, but it's a matter of preference. And uh, they, the Council is aiming at reinforce the ability to define its own rules, to make autonomous technological choices, and to develop and deploy strategic digital capacities and infrastructures. The AI provides for tools and regulatory powers to help shape global rules and standards. And this is really possible due to the extraterritorial scope. I have mentioned it in the, in the, in the conference of December, uh, this, uh, which that means it applies to providers in third countries who place services with AI systems in the EU market, as well as to providers whose AI systems produce outputs which are used in the EU. And the fines will be draconian, up to 6% of the global turnover in case of an infringement. Digital leadership seems to be also the ambition of UK. World leading that uh, data regime was the, the objective, and this world leading regime should not be based should be based on common sense and not box box ticking. It's, I think it's a very important, uh, nice and very uh, interesting wording. That means that the UK is aiming at building 
on the UK, strong international reputation for rule of law, technological breakthroughs, while recognizing that many digital opportunities and harms are international. Let me finish by saying that uh, it's a matter of size, it's a matter of perception, it's a matter of priorities, but I don't think that UK um, can uh, follow its own way, I did it in my way, <laughs> because um, it may be excluded from new non-UK markets, and this will be very important. Thank you for your passions and thank you for listening.